Hey guys, Caleb here, doing something slightly different with our lighting today, let me know what you think. And I think I found the perfect budget cinema lens set. We're gonna talk about these lenses and we're gonna start with the price. Everything you see on this desk here cost me 256 bucks, and that includes 250 millimeters. If you get rid of one of them, you're sitting at around $200 or less for an entire lens set, which I think is amazing. So what are these lenses? What's the story here? Are they even worth picking up? We're gonna get into all of that. But first I wanna thank today's sponsor, which is the Video Shooters Academy. It is a place where I sell camera training, researched and produced by me. So if you wanna support the channel and learn about your camera and some other filmmaking techniques, definitely check it out. We've got several new guides, including the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and the new Fuji X-T3 guide is available. So you can find that at academy.dslrvideoshooter. Com. So what's the deal with these lenses? Well, these are Shinan or Chinon lenses, and they're Japanese, and uh, they were made between kind of that 60s to 80s era, and it was really hard to find information on them, even with the wonderful internet. So they're kind of an oddball. They're not as popular as Canon FD when it comes to vintage or Nikon, Nikkor, or Olympus, or any of that stuff. So I stumbled across them on eBay and decided to go for an entire set and was just dumbfounded at how affordable these are. Let's run through these and I'm gonna start with the sensor coverage. So these actually can cover a 35 millimeter full frame sensor. I use them a lot with my a7 III and you'll see that in the test footage. Uh, I also shot all the tests and all the B-roll and test footage wide open to show you what you can get with each of these lenses. They come in a couple different mounts, including M42, the screw mount, the Pentex PK mount, as well as the Olympus OM mount. So as much as possible, if you're gonna pick some of these up, and I'll have links to all of them in the description, uh, you'll wanna go for that M42 that's gonna give you the most flexibility, the best adapters in my opinion. So this set consists of a 28 millimeter F2.8, a 35 millimeter F2.8, a 50 millimeter F1.7, another 50 millimeter F1.9, so two different options for a 50 millimeter. Then we have the 135 at 2.8, and finally, we have a 200 millimeter F3.5. All look very similar. They're all Shannon, and a lot of them are auto Shannon, so you'll see that kind of similarity. I would avoid Shinar if you come across those while you're searching. I picked up a bunch of those. Here's the 35 millimeter. It looks almost identical to the Shannon, so Shinar, Shannon. But I found almost universally that the quality was worse, if not really terrible. So I would avoid those, stick with the Shannon, and you'll be pretty happy. I'll have links to all the different lenses, adapters, and things we're going to talk about in this video in the description. Uh, you'll notice on these lenses, I do have them geared up. Now, you can't buy these. These are 3D printed gears that I personally have 3D printed, uh, but that really works well on these lenses because they're fully metal, really, really nice uh, when it comes to manual focus, which is important because there's no autofocus, and the actual degree of rotation is insane. If you watch my index finger here, this is the 35 millimeter. We're looking at, I don't know, 240 over 200 degrees, which is pretty impressive. So at this point, I'm going to run through all the lenses and we're gonna look at some footage and I'll talk about my findings. And I shot all of these with this setup, one second. The a7 III full frame camera, which these lenses can support. And I also shot everything wide open because I really wanted to show off how good or potentially bad these lenses are wide open, because we all know if you stop down, it's going to be better. So with all that out of the way, I went out and shot with each of these lenses, and here are my findings, starting with the 28 millimeter f2.8. Distortion on all of these lenses is a little noticeable, but nothing that I would stray away from. And again, we're looking at character with these lenses. This set of lenses has a very distinct look, and it's going to give you, in my opinion, something a little more cinematic than modern glass. This 28 millimeter cost me 52 bucks, and it's really not that bad for a wide angle lens. It's not the sharpest lens of this set, but considering the cost, I was really, really happy with it. Moving up to the 35 millimeter F2.8, 
This lens was also really nice to have in the set as a wide angle. I love having that 2.8 to get that shallow depth of field, especially on a full frame sensor. This 35 millimeter cost me 49 bucks. And I did notice that compared to the 28, once you get to the edges of your image, you start to notice some softness wide open. So you'll have to stop down if you want edge to edge sharpness. But again, for just shooting and getting nice footage, it worked plenty good for me. Next up, we have the first of our two 50 millimeters. This one is the 50 millimeter F 1.9. So there's a 1.9 and a 1.7. Unfortunately, I didn't shoot much with the 1.7. So here's some footage with the 50 millimeter 1.9. And I really dig it. It's a really small, really well made, easy to focus with 50 millimeter. This lens cost me a whopping 28 bucks on eBay shipped which I think is really, really impressive. Now this lens is a little soft in the center and the corners when we compare it to our next 50 millimeter. But again, a really affordable, great little lens to consider for this set. Now, if you want to spend a little more, there is the 50 millimeter F 1.7 from Shannon, and this one, it looks a little different. You'll notice it's a slightly different shape, and uh, we also have the Auto Shannon multi-coating labeling on the front of the lens. So obviously this lens is a little faster. I did notice it was sharper in the center of the image, but it still has some of that corner softness, so not a perfect lens, but again, both are gonna give you lots of shallow depth of field and look really great on these modern 4K cameras. I'm going to move Mr. A7 III so we can talk about this guy right here, the 135 millimeter F2.8. This lens has been great. I've really enjoyed using it. It's also so, so fun to use because of that really nice dampened focus ring and I really enjoyed using it. It's a phenomenal telephoto, and I'm finding that I'm really liking uh, 135 millimeters on these full frame cameras. So definitely one to consider. Surprisingly good center to edge sharpness for a lens of this age and this quality and this price. All that at a wide open f2.8. It also is a steal because you can pick one of these up for between 20 and 50 bucks. I bought mine for $23 uh, and it wasn't an auction. So so really, really uh, love the value of this lens. Definitely one to consider if you're only gonna pick up a few of these. And last but not least, we have the monstrous 200 millimeter F 3.5. So we're no longer getting that nice 2.8. It's a little darker of a lens, but it's also really impressive. 135 had me the most impressed when it comes to image quality. And then this guy is a little worse, but not as bad as you might expect for the money. So if you're looking for a telephoto prime lens uh, to include in a set like this, you might wanna check this one out. This 200 millimeter worked really well and I was really impressed with the center to edge sharpness for a 200 millimeter F 3.5 that is this affordable. And when it comes to the price, you're looking at around 60 bucks. That's what I paid for mine and wonderful to have if you're looking for that extra reach on a budget. So that's the set of lenses. I really enjoyed using them. I think they look really good on these newer digital sensors. Again, love that kind of uh, easing of the sharpness on these cameras that aren't film cameras. So I would always prefer a vintage lens over modern Canon Sigma enter modern lens here. Uh, I just really like the way it looks, especially if you're shooting 4K. It's just a really awesome combination. So in closing, I wanna also mention one other lens. It is also one of these Shannons. It's a little more, and that is the 55 millimeter F 1.7. Uh, it's pretty darn soft at the edges wide open, but this lens has really, really nice soap bubble bokeh, which a lot of people dig. It also has some of that swirly action on the edges of your image. So if you're into that stuff, you might wanna check this one out. And there's other Shannons you might wanna read about, including the 55 millimeter 1.4, which a lot of people like. So this is just a small sampling, but I love this set because of the price. So that's gonna do it for this video. All these will be linked to in the description. I also include some adapters, the ones that I've been using. And if you wanna see more lens reviews, stick around here on the channel. Check out the guides over at the Academy if you wanna learn more about your camera. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in our next video.